Praise the Lord, brethren. We want to thank God for another day in His presence. I want to bless God for how He has started with us. Um, a few weeks ago, while I was um, giving a response to some questions, we made it known to us that we are hoping that a day we come where the revival of the word will have gotten to a level that the person who God is going to use to minister to us will not always be Brother Fem. That God could pick anyone amongst us and speak a word to that person. This actually happened this week. Um, yeah, it happened uh, within the weekend, I guess. When God used one of our sisters to send a word into the group. And brethren, for days, I have not recovered from what she has said. Rather, I have spent time just looking at what God has spoken through her. And what we're going to discuss tonight is because of that revelation, that information that God gave that sister, which she posted in the group. What she said is, why is Jesus called the Word? Because Jesus is all God wanted to say to us. I have been at that place for a long time. Since she posted it, my extra time, anytime I am free, I am back at that statement. And you know, I responded to her immediately that flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. It's the Word himself that is speaking through you. And... I was so happy because I'm looking forward to the day that God will grow all of us and begin to speak some certain words that even myself will be shouting and saying, wow, this is God. This is God. I, I heard that word. I posted it everywhere and I'm still on that word. And that is the word that God is going to use to speak to us tonight. I pray that revival, true revival, will happen in our midst and that God will begin to speak and prophesy and move via every member that is connected to God via, via this group in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? The word will come to you tonight. We ask you to please open the eyes of our understanding. Let us see beyond the normal. Let us have a glimpse of the information you have for us. Give us a heart that hears. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Um, the word we are speaking about is why is Jesus called the word? Because Jesus is all God wanted to say to us. And where can we find that in the Bible? If you go to John chapter 1 verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. I want us to, I'm going to paint a scenario for us to understand the meaning of the word was made flesh. So that we could have a better understanding of the words of Jesus. And why they are so important. Important, and why a Christian is only made up of the words of Jesus. Before we explain this, I want us to quickly understand that in the book of John chapter 14 verse 21, Jesus said, if you keep my words, then my Father will come and dwell in you, and we will manifest ourselves through you. So Jesus is speaking that his disciples are those people that keep his words. Is those people that keep the word of Jesus are the ones that Jesus is interested about. Not those that keep the word of any other person. Not those that keep the words of prophets. Not those that keep the words of fellow human beings. Not those that keep the words of, of ordinary people. Not those that keep, keep the words of um, anointed men. No, 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 no. Those are not the words that, that makes the Father and Jesus dwell with you. What will make the Father and Jesus dwell with you is that if you keep the word so it is important to note that it is those that keep the word of God that have a form of um, 
inner presence where God and Jesus dwells inside that person. So, in John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says, The word was made flesh. It looks like a religious statement, but I, 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 I would try to explain it in various means. Okay. Um, imagine that you bought a cookery book on how to bake cake. And um, while you were with the book, as you were reading the book, reading the words about how to bake cake, so you will take flour, um, you mix it, you take warm water, you pour yeast inside, you put butter, um, you melted butter, uh, you put it, uh, you, 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 cut, uh, you cut eggs and put it in a bowl in the mixer and begin to mix it and have this uh, level of salt and this level of sugar and everything that is added, whatever it is added to make um, bread or cake. And as you are reading it, the words inside that book came out of the book and became a chef. And right in front of you, started preparing a cake. <laughs> I hope you are following the analogy. You opened a book. As you were reading the book, the words you are reading in the book became a human being in front of you, became a flesh, and was actually making the cake for you. In such a way, the cake that the person is making is exactly what you are reading in the book. So you are no longer reading. You are now seeing what you are reading. The words inside that book has become a flesh and is doing the things that is teaching you inside the book. So it now becomes a living example of the words that have been written down. <laughs> okay. Um, let me give us another example. Let me give us another example. Um, imagine you are preparing for an exam and you needed to read um, some subjects and as you are reading the subject the subject came out of the notebook and started acting out what you are supposed to read so the things you are supposed to read you are now seeing the words coming out and acting it in front of you in such a way that you now have a visual representative of what you are reading. So if you are even confused before, you can see exactly what you are reading. You can see it live and direct. Um, there were some literature manuals that um, I read in GSS 1 and GSS 2 and that I cannot forget easily because we converted it into a play. One of them is the trials of Brother Joe. Those of us who were who went to school in those days, in the early 90s or so, you will know this, um, uh, this stuff, late 80s and early 90s. Or there is a, there is a story that uh, a major character in it is called Agbalo Mary. And the reasons I could not forget these novels was because it was converted from what I have read. I read it first in the class. We now converted it to a playlet and we acted it out. So the process of acting the word left a permanent, indelicable mark in my brain, in my memory, because I was able to see what I read happening live. Now, Jesus did not only was not only the word jesus became the manifestation of the things that god is trying to say so the things that god wants to tell us the things that god wants to say became jesus so jesus was jesus life is actually the things that jesus wanted to say the things that God wants to say now became a life and showed us an example of what God has been trying to say. So Jesus was made flesh. 
to now leave out what God has been trying to tell us all this while. And every word that Jesus gave as instruction also was the life he lived. So the instructions of Jesus were now um, in flesh. So the instructions and the words and the commandments of Jesus can now be seen in flesh, living out the word that God had been trying to speak to man. And when I decided to look at Jesus and the kind of life he lived and compare it with Adam and Eve before they sinned, I discovered that Jesus is truly the same yesterday, today, and forever. His style of living that takes no thought of everything on earth, but lives just to please God, is exactly the kind of life that Adam and Eve lived before sin came into the world. And that information that Adam and Eve had that made them overcomers, that made them not concerned about anything in this world, is the same thing that God has been trying to speak. But because man could not understand God, God now needs to take the word he has been trying to speak and mold it into a flesh and put the word inside the flesh and ask the flesh to show us example of what God has been trying to say. So the lifestyle of Jesus becomes the example for the word that Jesus was speaking. When you want to understand what Jesus has said, and you want to look at the the instructions that Jesus has given, or you want to see what God has in mind for men, for Christians, then you look at Jesus. Jesus becomes the final and only example. Because he is the word of God that has now been put inside the flesh to show us an example. If, if we put it in another way, we'll say that Jesus dramatized the word. The instructions in the heart of God of how he wants human beings to live. Jesus was the dramatization of it. Jesus was the acting out of the word of God. So every time somebody gives you an instruction of Jesus, you cannot take the instruction outside of Jesus. You cannot give the instructions and explanation outside of Jesus. To understand every instruction from Jesus, you must look at Jesus himself. That's what the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why is Jesus the author and finisher of our faith? Our faith was found in the word of Jesus. The word of Jesus formed our faith. And Jesus himself is now the faith, the word that we are looking at. So you have to look up to Jesus to understand Christianity. If anybody gives you an instruction anywhere, you first have to go and look at Jesus to understand what can I find in Jesus. When, 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 uh, when people talk about nakedness and all kind of story about nakedness, my home portion, how I knew what Jesus wanted was I went to look at Jesus. And I started studying everything that has to do with Jesus concerning dressing. Until I got to a place where I saw when Peter heard that it was Jesus, he quickly put on his clothes. Uh huh. From the lifestyle of relationship with Jesus, I was able to know what Jesus says on that matter. When it comes to sowing seeds, I looked at Jesus. I don't just speak Bible verses and begin to give them interpretation outside the dramatization of the word. Jesus has come to dramatize out what he has said. So I see a Jesus who, who, who gave an instruction that go freely, the freely you were given, freely you have received, 
freely give. And I now look at the same Jesus in his life. I discover that that's what he was doing. So the interpretation of the words in the scriptures is the lifestyle of Jesus. The lifestyle of Jesus is actually the word. And Jesus and the word, they are one. Because Jesus is actually the word. He is just the word that was placed inside of a flesh. To now dramatize how to us what God has said. I know Jesus said that every word he has spoken, he has heard from the Father. If he has not heard from the Father, he wouldn't have told us. So brethren, whatever you see in Jesus is actually what God has wanted to say. But because we couldn't get it clearly, it is difficult for us. Just like God showed us on the mountain, we need practicals. You couldn't have uh, gone to a medical school without practical. You can't perform an operation without practical. So God sent Jesus in advance to come and show us practically what it means to please God. Because Jesus looked at the head and discovered that nobody was pleasing him. If David had pleased God with his dancing, Oh no, Jesus will have, the Bible, Jesus will have come to tell us that, okay, I don't need to come to show you example again. Just follow David. Just be playing instrument and be dancing and I am pleased. But what do we see in the lifestyle of Jesus? We did not see a Jesus who was busy playing instrument and dancing up and down. Because that was not what was pleasing in the heart of God. Unfortunately today, we have now gone to David to go and take dancing, dancing, dancing. Go and check um, the, a typical advert of a church in Nigeria. Typical advert of a church in Nigeria. All you will see is dancing. We've even created services called praise concert where we'll gather together for seven hours and be dancing, 24 hours, and we say we are dancing. Why? Did we see that inside the word? The example that the word gave us, did we see him do that? No. Where do we get that from? We got that from David, that Jesus never said, that is an example. He did not please God with his dancing. The Bible says David was a man after the heart of God. It is simple English. It's simple English. If somebody says, but I feel me is after my car. Does that mean that your car is the one chasing me or I am the one chasing your car? Of course, it means I'm the one running after your car. So, um, if the Bible says, for David is a man after the art of God, after God's art, that is, he's a man who is trying everything possible to get the art of God. It does not mean that David is a man whose God, who the heart of God was like, I am after David. It's not possible. <laughs> Even Jesus, who was the beloved son, he's not here. This is my beloved son, who my heart is after. <laughs> so we have twisted it. So that's why we have gone to David now to pick instructions on dancing and singing and instrumentation from him, and we converted the church to a disco hall in the name of dancing to God. It did not please God. The one that pleased God was the word that came out of the mouth of God that entered into a flesh and showed up an example of what it is to please God. Jesus so much pleased God with his life that God has to speak from heaven. This is the example. This is my word. It is my word that I am pleased in. This is the word. This is, this is what I've been trying to tell you human beings. Since I created you, I showed Adam and Eve. He was always coming to the garden in the evening to show Adam and Eve what I wanted. But on, in his absence, Adam and Eve fell. And I've been trying to tell you. This is what a Christian should be. 
This is what a person that will come to my kingdom should look like. I've been trying to tell you. Now I now form that word that I've been trying to say. I now put a flesh inside, uh, outside of him and put the word inside the flesh to show you an example of what I wanted. So if anybody wants to ever hear God say, I am pleased with you. If you ever want to hear God say, I am pleased with you. Brethren, then you have to go and copy Jesus. You have to imitate Jesus and do it exactly the way Jesus did it. Exactly the way Jesus did it. When you see in Jesus' ministry, he was after the souls and he was discipling people. So if you ever want Jesus to be happy with your ministry, then you have to do ministry exactly the way Jesus did ministry. If you think building an auditorium will please God, please go back to the Old Testament and go and look at, at everybody that built. God never told any of them that I am pleased with your building. Not one. Solomon that spent so much money on an auditorium, God just looked at him. Said, My ears will be here. He did not even say well done. God did not even say, I love this building. God did not even say, oh, this is fantastic. No, 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 no. He said, oh, because you have built this, my ears will be here. My ears will be here. God, God even told Solomon, you know, I cannot dwell in a building made of hands. I cannot dwell in it. <laughs> so where do we get what we are doing today? Where do we get it from? We can't find it in Jesus. So God is not pleased with it. No matter how gigantic it is, that's not what pleased God. What pleased God is discipleship. It's the souls that you have won. And you becoming a disciple, that's what pleased God. If you are not yet a disciple, following after Jesus with the entirety of your life, you have not pleased God. Because that's what pleased God. That's why God looked down for him and said, I love this. This thing that Jesus is doing is what I love. If you're a pastor, you're a minister connected here, you have to go back to ministry exactly the way Christ does it. And that's why by the grace of God, well, we'll be, uh, the mountain experience is over, but the mountain experience continues. And uh, by uh, in September, first week in September, we'll be sitting down with pastors for two days. We'll be discussing with pastors to look at how can we do ministry the Christ way. So that God could look down from heaven and say, I am pleased with you. There was no record anywhere of Jesus <laughs> doing some things that you are doing. There was no record anywhere. And the things that we have record of Jesus doing, you have not started doing them all. Then God is not pleased with you. Because he's only pleased with his word. That's the only thing that pleases God. His word. His word. It is his word that pleased him. He saw his word and he was happy. So you want God to be happy with you? Then you have to recognize that, that one pastor, one minister say we should start doing it like this has no meaning unless you can find it in the word. That I feel like doing it like this, I feel like doing it like that, has no recognition unless you can find it in the word of Christ. And what's the word of Christ? The lifestyle of Christ. So the greatest minister, the greatest minister to God on earth today is the minister that has the least... <laughs> The minister that has the least, that missionary who is serving God and teaching and discipling in the bush, he doesn't even have amenities. Actually, before God, is greater than me. Because I have a house that I'm living inside. I have cars that I'm driving. <laughs> it's like Jesus. The more we are like Jesus, the greater we are. 
So you see that it is opposite of the worldly standard. The worldly standard says the richer and bigger the church and the ministry is, the greater is he. That's not the Bible the biblical standard because God loved Jesus for having nothing. But I can be greater. I can walk with Christ to be greater than everybody if I ensure that all that I have now doesn't belong to me. So the house I have, I must ensure it's not my own and I never lay claim to it. I never say it's my house. I never take decision on it. I am a tenant in the house of God. Then yes, I am right to Christ. I could make up my mind and say, God, I hold nothing. I am not the owner of this. I am empty like you. I don't want to have anything. And God will test it with me one day and say, okay, leave the car and trek. Give the car to the person to use for one week. And I will, uh, so if it's not my car, I quickly give and say, it's not my car, I've given it out. Then I have nothing. Then I'm great in the kingdom of God. So the, the reason we, we live the kind of life we are living and we are always interested in discipleship is not because it's a method of ministry. No, it's because that was the example that the word gave us with his life. And we have to follow it. That is the example the word gave us with his own life. Because that word's life is actually the word inside a flesh manifesting Jesus. Manifesting the word of God to us by showing us an example. So you could not live your Christian life in any other way that is different from exactly the way Jesus lived it and and they expect God to be pleased. Unless you live it exactly the way Jesus lived it, God can never be pleased with you because he's only pleased with his word. Until you begin to look like the word, then God is not pleased with you. The word became flesh and manifested what God has been trying to say. What God was trying to tell uh, David, trying to tell Abraham, trying to tell Elijah, trying to tell Elisha. God was trying to show them, but they did not understand. That's why Elisha was so blind enough to be calling down fire. And because he was the carrier of the anointing, he was roasting fellow human beings. Such a murderer. Is it Elisha that poor children were making just of him? If those children know better, would they make just of him? Couldn't he have called the children together and performed a better miracle in front of them so they could believe God? No. His anger and wickedness calls for animals to tear them off. What a wicked human being. That's why God forgive someone like me too in the past. When we'll be asking God for uh, uh, the anointing of Elijah. God forbid useless anointing. Asking for anointing of Elijah. God forbid useless anointing. Anointing of death. And nothing that is against the word of God. And nothing that is against the, the, what pleases God. No wonder God was not pleased with them. No wonder that Jesus had to tell everybody that John the Baptist is better than all of them put together. That is all the dancing that David was dancing was never pleased, was never pleased to God. The fire that Elijah was calling wasn't pleasing to God. All their life wasn't pleasing to God. But that was not the word. That was not what God was trying to say. That's not what God make God. That's not what makes God happy. What makes God happy is following His word, and that word came in flesh. And we must live our life exactly like that word. As a sister, you must look like a Jesus. And don't tell me that um, I'm doing it by faith. It, it, it depends on my heart. There's nothing depending on your heart here. You must look like Jesus. By the grace of God, that's why we are doing the Bible study. That's why we are going through the book of Genesis, uh, sorry, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to read the lifestyle of Jesus. How did Jesus live the life? Because that is the word coming alive. That is the word being dramatized in front of us so we can see and copy. We can see and learn. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, we can see and manifest like Him. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. And in the book of Romans, we're told that to those He predestinates, He predestinated them 
to conform to the image of his son, who is now the firstborn. So Jesus is now the firstborn. He's the first person to walk on earth in the image of God because he was the first person to carry out the word of God and live according to what God had been trying to say and live it perfectly. He was the first person. So he was the only person to first come to the earth and live right. Any other person that will be a child of God or be accepted in heaven must have exactly that life of Jesus. And now do you have it? By the help of the Holy Spirit is to live like a Jesus. Let your life be like that of Jesus. Because when you get to heaven, all God is interested in is seeing another Jesus. Now the beautiful thing is this. No matter how far you are from the world, no matter how lost you are from the world, if you decide today that you will surrender to the Holy Spirit to help you, after the Holy Spirit begins to work on you, you become another Jesus. You that everybody has, 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 has rejected, you that sin seems to have held down, you that seem to have made so much mistakes and things are not going your way again. You that the devil has told you you are a bastard, you are useless, you are a non-entity and the devil has told you every rubbish. All you need to do is accept Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit lead you through the word of God and you will become like Jesus. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you will become like Jesus by the word of God and by following the lifestyle of Jesus. That is where true victory is. That's the time you will note that whatever happens to you is not an attack of the devil. It's a temptation. Because you are very sure that you are now living a life of Christ and you have the victory that Jesus had because you are another Jesus on earth then also I want us to know that the word is ever living the word did not die the word is not dead rather the word is not dead they tried to kill the word but the word only took sabbatical leave and came back three days later so, the word of God is ever living. It never dies. So, when you decide to live a life that is like the word, you have a life that cannot be ended. <laughs> the ever-present power of the word comes into you and you become a living being. And the life is so sure that even after you die here, you continue with another life, with the same life, into eternity. It cannot die. So the more you live with the word of God, and you allow the word of God to manifest in you, and you now begin to live the life of the word, as that, that is the life of Jesus, then you have a, a life that cannot be destroyed. You have a light that cannot be quenched. Because the, the word of God did not was not killed and died. It came back again and became alive forever. And this also means that whatever prophecy that comes from the mouth of Christ for you will definitely come to pass, no matter how much the devil fight it. Because it's a, it's a living word. If the prophecy came from just a mere mortal, or the prophecy was just permutations of man, it will fail. But if the prophecies that has come to you and for you came from Christ, then you are rest assured in Christ that they will come to full manifestation. They will be fully manifested in your life. So when the devil now tries to fight the prophecies that God has given you, I want you to stand tall and tell the devil, Jesus' word cannot die again. It has been killed it has come back and is forever living. So whatever 
prophecy and promises that God gives you will definitely come to manifestation. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. When God has spoken concerning you, it will definitely come to pass. All you have to do is wait for it. So brethren, it's a night with the word. And our prayers are in two sides. Number one, if you are not yet like the word, or you don't even know how the word lives his life to copy him and imitate him, you're going to ask God to help you to see Christ. When you see Jesus, you have seen the word. <laughs> so you're going to ask God to open your eyes to see Christ. Some of us are, hey, what? why is pastor so-so-so? What are pastor so-so-so? Are you saying that pastor so-so-so will not? Are you saying uh, reverend so-so-so? What of, why is uh, the people our general is doing it? Uh, no, 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 no. You are still not seeing the word. You are, that person is still blind. It's a blind fellow that, that talks like that. You need to see Jesus. In one of the prayers that Sister Joker led in the, in the mountain experience, God opened my eyes. That's our prayer tonight also. Father, open my eyes. Let me see the word. It came as an example for me. Let me see the word. And our second prayer is this. Father, I receive every prophecy you have given me. And I hold on to it. And I wait for their manifestation. Because the word of God cannot die. Those are our two prayers tonight. I pray that you spend time... I pray that as you spend time with the word, the word will manifest itself in your life. You will also become like the word. You will have access to life here on earth and after death. God bless you as you go into your prayers now.